Here's my version of a, an old favourite of Makers, a pet food dispenser. There's plenty out there. They fit different motors and they're different sizes. This is mine. I made it for fun. Partly the fun of just modelling it and also so that it fits my stepper motor that I have already. Here's the things you need. The hopper. I'll put a link to this. Should be fairly easy to print. A screw. This is what pushes the food out. These two things I'll put a link to. These are the things I modelled. You also... Is, this next bit's optional, but uh, a bearing. This will help keep things in, in kind of a true orientation when they're rotating. Reduces grinding. It's optional, but I recommend it. A couple of screws. Here's a stepper motor, just a cheap one. Driver board and an Arduino. This is an Arduino Nano. Okay, a bit more detail about these things. Here, here's the bearing. This is just what I had lying around. There's all different kinds. I think the colour signifies something. Um, I don't know if this is the best one to use. I found it a bit stiff, so I took the grease out and I put some silicone lubricant in instead. It's up to you whether you use this kind or if you have another on hand, you can use that. About printing, uh, this model doesn't really need supports, but you might as well print it with supports. It adds some in here and on the other side. It's, it's worth having supports just in case. It won't increase the build time much, but makes it more reliable. If you want to make the hopper bigger, you can just add extra flat pieces above it, card or board or, or something to help funnel the extra contents in. Here's the screw. This I recommend printing vertically with supports. Maybe your 3D printer will be fine without supports, but if you want it to be nice and smoother, I recommend using supports on this and printing vertically. Okay, here are the screws. These are just hard drive screws I happen to have lying around. If they don't fit in, you whatever screws you have, you may want to just enlarge the holes using a drill bit or a braddle or some other pointy tool. Uh, you can you want to use self-tapping screws as well, not not just bolts. Okay, so here's the stepper motor and the driver board. The stepper motor and driver board cost less than two pound on eBay from China. The stepper motor is a, a 28BYJ-48, it's a 5 volt stepper motor, and as I said it commonly comes with, with the driver board, so you might as well buy both of those together. It's, it's reasonably powerful, in, enough for this task anyway. The other thing, obviously you need uh, something to control it, in this case I'm using uh, what's called an Arduino Nano. It's using an Atmega328 chip, same as you'd see on a Arduino Uno, or maybe you've got a bare chip, you could use that as well. So I previously was just using a bare Atmega328 chip, but as you can see, the size difference, there's not much difference in size. You might as well use Nano, and it's got a built-in serial connection with USB as well so it just makes it easier and as you can see there's not much size difference. I'm just using this because it looks a bit neater on video as well that's the other reason. The other thing you need is some jumper wires. Four for the GPIO connections and two for the power connections. Just using some normal kind of jumper cables here, you can use whatever you have, or even just wires. Okay, let's do the assembly now. First thing we'll do is we'll put this bearing in. This bearing is a 608RS, and it's 8mm by 22mm. So as long as it's that size, it should fit in this hole. This hole is friction fit. There may be some material left on the edge after printing it. If there is, you can clear it up around the edge with just something sharp. 
if you're struggling to fit the bearing in. So you should just be able to friction fit it in. There we go, push it in. It still sticks out a bit proud of this ring. The reason is so you can get it out a bit easier if you need to disassemble it later. It's always a good idea to make things easy to disassemble in case you need to fix them or reuse the components in them. Okay, so that's the bearing. After adding the bearing, what you need to do is put a screw in. This is important to do this first because it makes it easier to line up the servo with it. So if you put that in and hold it and put your servo through the same little notch, you'll be sure it lines up then. There we go. So I made sure the orienta orientation was the same and now that's in there. I can screw it. Don't tighten up the screws too tight when you're tightening them. The reason is, with it being plastic, if you over tighten it, you could damage the, the plastic hopper. go tightened that's pretty secure you can run a, t a cable to tie through this hole here uh, if you make that hole open that's just a support in there and you could use a cable tie to secure the stepper motor but I'm using screws here so there you go that's the stepper motor the shaft is connected to the screw and it goes through the bearing that's that bit done. Next up, let's talk about the connections between the driver board, that's Gary, and the Arduino. This driver board is based on the ULN 2003 chip, so you don't need any extra components. It takes 5 volts, which I'm taking from the 5 volts and ground pins of the Arduino. These pins are actually the same power that comes from the USB, so they're not regulated and it should be able to provide enough power for the stepper motor. On the other side of the Arduino we have our digital pins. These are connected to the driver board. I'm using pins D2 through to D5. Obviously you need these cables to connect. Uh, these are just jump, uh, DuPont style jumper cables. And there we go. That's the assembly. Next up, we can talk about the coding. Okay, here we go with the code. Pretty simple. I'm using Arduino here, the Arduino IDE. The only library you need is the stepper motor library. Here we have on the next line an integer that tells you how many steps there are for an entire revolution of the stepper motor. It's not critical for an application like this. Uh, I don't remember how I came up with 2050, but that seems to work fine. The next line is the constructor for the my stepper object. Here we're using the steps per revolution that we've already defined. And these four numbers following are the GPIO pins. So you want to make sure these match yours. In the setup, all we do here is we set the speed. I think 14 is the maximum speed for the stepper motor. I don't know what it defaults to, but here you go, I have it as 14. Here's the main loop. A little bit of complexity in here, I will tell you what it is. Let me step back a bit and explain one of the problems with feeding things from a hopper. 
The main problem you'll find is jamming, and it depends on what size items you have in your hopper. Also depends on what friction they have, what shape they are, things like that. The best way to stop it jamming is to not just blindly step forward and keep dispensing. So you could just step forward all the time. So here's the stepping forward. So what we could do in our loop is ignore all this, pretend this is the simplest case. So what we do is, this is the simplest possible thing you could have. It steps 35 steps forward and that will work, but it probably won't work for very long because the kibble will jam in the hopper. This happens to commercial hoppers. This happens to commercial pet feeders. If you have a look at reviews for pet feeders, one of the common complaints of commercially bought pet feeders is they jam and jamming is a real problem. You can't get away from it entirely, but what you can do is try to reduce the problem. And that's where the extra complexity co comes in. So let me go back to the full code. So the first thing we do is we vibrate three times. Let me show you the vibrate code here. All this does is for the number of times defined, it steps backwards a little bit waits a little bit and then steps forward a little bit. So this is essentially a wiggle. You could call it wiggle instead of vibrate. So what it does here is in the loop each time it wiggles three times, vibrates a little bit just to help move anything that's jammed. Then the next thing is it steps backwards. So so it turns the screw backwards a little bit. Again, this is an anti-jamming feature. So it reverses it, waits for uh, 200 milliseconds, fifth of a second, does another little vibrate, and then it does the actual forward stepping. You'll get quite a few kibble coming out at this step rate. You can obviously tweak it. And here I've just got a five second delay, that's probably not enough. Um, you would want a longer delay in a real situation or you would want to control it via a button or something like that. But here you go, this is the whole code you need to actually get it running. Uh, jamming's pretty much non-existent. You can usually leave it and it will unjam itself after a while even if it does jam. There are additional things you could do to detect jamming and act differently. So you could add a little optical sensor or something to, to see if the motor's not actually turning or if kibble's not being dispensed. And what you could do in that case is you could probably um, go in and, and if you detect that, you could maybe do some extra reversing and vibrating until it's back to normal again. This works pretty well. You can also add a button in. I will show you what that looks like. Here's just some simple additions for pressing a button to control it. Define the button pin. Here I'm using D6. Set the pin mode to an input with a pull up. And then, as you can see, I've made the vibration backwards and forwards movement into a little, a little procedure called dispense and in the loop all it does is check if the button's being pressed. Being pressed means that it's zero, i.e. It's, it's been grounded and then it dispenses. So the other thing you could do here is uh, a timer or something else and then call dispense when, when you've hit the time you want to dispense. Thanks for watching. I'll put some links to the model on Thingiverse in the description. This project's pretty simple, so there's still a lot of scope for you to add things. So you could add uh, an enclosure to act as a lid, 
to stop your pets from getting at the screw and the top of it. When you're entirely happy, you might want to glue the screw to the stepper motor to keep it in place permanently. On the model, you might want to make uh, an area for the circuit boards. You could add the nano and stepper motor board actually to the sides of the model. There's enough space there, or you could just hot glue them there. You could also add some kind of jam detection circuitry or sensors and a bit of logic so that it sounds an alarm or something if it jams. That way your pet won't starve, or at least start to hate you. <laughs>